What the hell is going on here? I snarled, slamming the bank statements down on the kitchen counter. The numbers stared back accusingly, thousands of dollars drained from my personal account over the past few months. Clay glanced up from his laptop, his chiseled jaw tightening. What are you ranting about now, Arya? I could hear the dismissive tone laced with irritation. Don't play dumb with me. Nearly ten grand has disappeared from my savings account, and I want to know where it went. He scoffed, shaking his head as if I was overreacting. You're being ridiculous. It's our money. Doesn't matter whose account it's in. My blood boiled at his arrogant indifference. We'd had this circular argument too many times. That's my personal savings I've built up over years, Clay. My money from marketing clients and investments. You can't just drain it whenever you want. I had some extra expenses to cover for the team, that's all. Clay shrugged nonchalantly before returning his gaze to the laptop screen. No need to make a federal case out of it. I opened my mouth but quickly clamped it shut. Reasoning with him was futile when he got this cavalier. Something dark twisted in the pit of my stomach, an instinct I could no longer ignore. Look at me. My voice was quieter but laced with steel. Clay's eyes flicked up, finally registering my simmering anger. What? I'm not buying your excuses anymore, not this time. I leaned forward, gripping the counter's edge until my knuckles turned white. You're lying to me about something, and I'm going to find out what it is. A humorless laugh escaped his lips as he rose from his chair. You're being paranoid, babe. The company's doing great, and your dad's business is more successful than ever. There was that smug, placating tone again, the one designed to make me doubt myself and back down. Not this time. In a few strides I was nose to nose with Clay, no kitchen counter between us. Don't you dare bring my family into this, if you've done anything to jeopardize their company. His features hardened, and he grabbed my wrist, his grip just shy of bruising. You listen to me. I've given you a life most women only dream about, a nice home, vacations, financial security. Stop acting like an ungrateful, hysterical shrew and leave the money talk to me. My heart was pounding, but not from fear. That arrogant sneer and his dismissive words ignited something within me, a simmering rage I'd suppressed for too long. In that moment, the carefully constructed facade of our marriage began to splinter. His fingers dug painfully into my skin as he leaned closer. This jealousy and distrust doesn't look good on you, Aria. Now, why don't you go take a hot bath and let me worry about the finances like a good little wife? That was the final condescending blow I could take. With a strength born of pure fury, I wrenched my arm free from his grasp. You narcissistic bastard. Our marriage is one big financial lie. Well, I'm done being one of your blind little lambs. Clay's eyes widened slightly at my vehemence, but I didn't stick around to hear his pitiful excuses and insults. I spun on my heel and stormed out, the slam of the front door being the final punctuation on our fractured carade. The truth was out there somewhere, and nothing was going to stop me from finding it and bringing Clay's deceit into the scorching light. The next morning, I strode into Westbrook Marketing, feeling clear-headed for the first time in months. Clay had already left for the office, which was probably for the best. I needed time to think through my next moves without his toxic presence clouding my judgment. Everything okay? Dean, one of the top data analysts, peered at me with a concerned frown as I settled at my desk. I forced a tight smile, keenly aware that the entire office had likely overheard my explosive fight with Clay yesterday. Just a minor disagreement with my husband, but I'm fine, really. Dean didn't seem convinced but gave a hesitant nod before returning to his work. I exhaled slowly, grateful that he didn't press further. I could sort through my marital problems on my own, starting by getting to the bottom of Clay's shady financial dealings. By lunchtime, I'd already dug up bank statements for the past year and created a meticulously detailed spreadsheet tracking where every cent of my savings and earnings had gone. The numbers told a disturbing story of frequent large withdrawals that Clay hadn't accounted for. He really is hemorrhaging your finances. A familiar voice made me jump. Lena stood over my shoulder, eyes narrowed at the incriminating spreadsheet. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Your door was open. I quickly waved her inside, relief flooding me that my oldest friend was here. Lena, I'm so glad you stopped by. 
Clay's been up to something underhanded for a while now, and I need your help nailing down what it is. She settled into the chair across from me, jaw set in a determined line. You know I've got your back, no matter what. Just tell me everything. Over the next hour, I recounted every sketchy comment and strange financial discrepancy involving Clay, from the missing funds to his illusions about covering expenses for his precious sales team. By the end, Lena's eyes had hardened to chips of green ice. That weaselly son of a bitch, she hissed, surprising me with her uncharacteristic venom. Don't worry, Arya, we'll make him pay for this deception, both financially and emotionally. I couldn't help the rush of gratitude and affection for my straight-shooting friend. Thank you, Lena. You have no idea how much it means to have you in my corner. Lena leaned forward, perfectly arched brows furrowed in thought. Okay, first thing we need to do is documentation. I'll draft a formal letter from my firm putting Clay on notice that his shady dealings won't be tolerated. We'll also need to look into your options for legal protection, just in case that slime ball tries anything underhanded. I nodded, finally feeling like I was taking back control. There's more. I think some of my dad's business funds may have also been compromised. Lena's eyes went wide with outrage. Clay stole from Max, too? Oh, that tears it. I'll make sure his expensive suits get taken away and he rots in prison. My lips twitched despite the circumstances. Only Lena could interweave snark and dogged loyalty so seamlessly. Slow down there, bulldog. We need to gather hard proof first before looping in my dad. I placed a calming hand on her arm. For now, let's focus on legally protecting me and making sure Clay faces consequences for his thievery. Lena's severe expression softened slightly, and she gave a brisk nod. You're right. We do this methodically and by the book. God help that bastard once we put the screws to him. A sense of grim purpose settled over me. My marriage may have crumbled, but I refused to be another helpless victim of Clay's manipulation. With Lena's brilliant legal mind and my own determination, the deceitful facade was about to come crashing down. Justice and vengeance were on the horizon, and nothing would stop me from achieving both. Over the next few days, Lena and I compiled an airtight dossier documenting every suspicious transaction and questionable money trail involving Clay. My whole body thrummed with vindicated fury each time another piece of evidence materialized. I was bent over my laptop Friday evening, scouring Clay's company expenses yet again, when my cell phone buzzed with an incoming call from my dad. A knot formed in my stomach. I hadn't been ready to loop him in on this chaos just yet. Hey, Dad, what's up? I tried to keep my tone light. Aria, we need to talk. Max's gruff voice was laced with an uncharacteristic tension. It's about your husband and the company finances. I felt the blood drain from my face as realization crashed over me. Lena and I had been so focused on Clay's personal deception that we missed how deeply his thievery may have penetrated into my father's business world. I'm on my way over now, I said, already grabbing my purse and car keys. When I arrived at Max's house twenty minutes later, he was waiting in the den, a grim countenance etched on his chiseled features. This couldn't be good. His piercing gaze met mine as I entered. You weren't going to tell me about that snake, Clayton, misappropriating funds from my marketing software firm? I opened my mouth, but the words stuck in my throat. How did he find out? As if sensing my question, Max jerked his chin towards the love seat. Your friend Dean came to see me, showed me documents indicating your husband's been skimming money from client accounts and grossly overbilling. There was Dean, looking appropriately abashed at having spilled the beans. But his eyes were resolute. He clearly saw this as the moral thing to do. I'm so sorry, Arya, he said sincerely. I couldn't just stand by while Clay kept robbing your family like that. Not after all Max has done for the company and his employees. A surge of affection for my ethical colleague washed over me. No, Dean, you did the right thing. I was trying to gather proof before bringing this to Dad's attention. Max let out a gruff noise of assent. Good thinking. We'll need to blow that rat scheme out into the open with irrefutable evidence. For the next hour, Dean outlined the improper billing and accounting discrepancies while I shared the documentation Lena and I had compiled regarding the personal finances. By the end, a pall of grim determination had settled over the three of us. So, I cleared my throat, keeping my voice as steady as possible. 
What's our next move to take down Clay? The muscle in Max's taut jaw twitched almost imperceptibly. We keep gathering proof, but don't make a move against him until we've got the full scope of his thievery. Lena's helping with this, I assume? I nodded. She's already got me separated financially and is working on legal protection just in case Clay retaliates. The barest hint of a smile played across Dean's lips. Smart woman, that Lena. Max slapped his hand down on the desk with a dull thud. Good. Clayton Barrett has messed with the wrong family this time. We'll hit him with everything we've got until that con man is destitute and behind bars where he belongs. The sheer venom in my normally stoic father's voice made me flinch. But I couldn't fault his fury. Clay had well and truly betrayed us all. I want to take the lead on this, I stated in a low voice. Clay's my husband and his deception cuts the deepest with me. My dad's eyes bored into mine for a long moment before giving a solemn nod of agreement. Damn right, kiddo. We're all behind you 100% to take that scumbag down. Dean put a reassuring hand on my shoulder and gave it a supportive squeeze. United with the most important men in my life, a wave of fierce resolve washed over me. I would make Clay pay for every last cent he'd stolen. More importantly, I'd shatter the twisted facade he'd constructed and regain my sense of self, my independence, once and for all. The games were over. The reckoning had officially begun. Over the next few weeks, a cold determination took root within me, hardening my resolve with each new, unraveled deception. Thanks to Dean's diligent record-keeping and Lena's legal prowess, the full, sickening scope of Clay's financial crimes came into focus. Not only had he embezzled funds from my personal accounts, but he'd expertly skimmed money from client billings at my father's company through a complex system of shell corporations and insider deals with shady third-party vendors. His greed and arrogance knew no bounds. Your bastard husband has been bleeding us dry for years, Dad growled, poring over the documentation one evening. The muscle in his weathered jaw twitched with barely restrained fury. We've got him nailed to the wall on multiple counts of fraud, tax evasion, you name it. Lena's lips curved into a predatory smile, green eyes glinting with vengeful triumph. That double-crossing snake is going down hard. While settling the legal noose around Clay's neck, Lena and Dean were also advising me on establishing financial independence, securing credit and assets solely in my name, squirreling away cash reserves in preparation for an inevitable divorce battle. I'd be damned if I let Clayton manipulate me into domestic violence victim territory, living off grudging alimony scraps. With every dossier review and money trail unraveled, my own sense of self-determination deepened. The insidious fog of marital gaslighting that Clay had woven now dissipated in the cold, harsh light of his deceptions. He'd inflicted the cruelest form of betrayal by robbing from my family while eroding my sense of self-worth. But like the mythological phoenix, I was rising from the ashes of my codependent naivete. Arya, we've got everything lined up to crush that weasel, Lena said jaw set in a grim line. The million-dollar question is, do you want to confront Clayton before or after we lower the legal boom? I stared her down, body humming with a buzzing undercurrent of wrath. While part of me wanted the smug shock value of blindsiding Clay after he'd been indicted on multiple felonies, I knew that wasn't my style. More importantly, I wanted to look into his cold, cold, vapid eyes when I ripped the mask off his deceitful facade to leave no doubt that I outwitted and overpowered him at every turn. And so it was that I found found myself gripping the damning evidence file with white knuckles as I strode into Clay's hotel suite three nights later. He'd been traveling on yet another regional manager trip, code for some extended tryst with a mistress bankrolled by his ill-gotten gains. Working a bit late tonight, aren't we? His lips split into that annoyingly cocky grin I'd once found charming as I stepped into the dimly lit living area. He drained the last sip of scotch from his tumbler. To what do I owe the pleasure of this surprise visit, Mrs. Barrett? The overwhelming stench of Chiper perfume, his latest tawdry conquest, no doubt, wafted from the bedroom suite. My grip tightened further on the file until the edges crinkled. Cut the smarmy bullshit, Clay. You and I both know surprise visits have never been your forte. His lopsided smirk faltered ever so slightly. What's that supposed to mean? Summoning every last ounce of icy calm I possessed, 
I strode forward and slammed the thick evidence file onto the marble-topped cocktail table, scattering the contents in a frenzied spiral of incriminating documents and bank statements. It means I know everything, you degenerate sack of shit. The words hissed through my gritted teeth. Every illicit transfer, every shady account, every penny you stole from me and my family's company while parading around like some high-rolling corporate raider. Clay's face turned to stone as the gravity of the situation came crashing down around him. He opened his mouth, but I cut him off with a raised hand. Don't bother lying or feigning innocence. That ship sailed the moment you helped yourself to my life savings to fund your tawdry affairs and inflated expense accounts. I allowed myself a grim half-smile at the utterly bewildered look on his face. What, you thought I'd never catch on? That I'd stay your meek, obedient little wife forever while you conned me blind? Clay's jaw clenched, lips pressed into a thin line. You've got it all wrong, Arya. I can explain every last cent. With a rough jerk of his arm, he swiped the damning papers off the cocktail table in an angry clatter. The company's been going through some transitional headaches, but I have it all under control. As for your money, I told you before, it's our assets pooled together. Our assets? I let out a humorless bark of laughter. Wake up and smell the jail cell you've earned yourself. Those convoluted money trails and insider deals prove you bilked literally millions from my father's firm and my own accounts. Clay visibly paled at my words but leveled his patented ice-cold glare my way. You ungrateful little bitch. Is this the thanks I get for providing you a life of luxury? I'll bury you in that senile old prick Max in litigation until you're both bankrupt shells. White-hot anger spiked through me, momentarily stealing my breath at his callous arrogance. I stood there shaking with rage while he fumed and blathered more hollow threats and deflections. Finally, I raised my hand again, silencing his tirade. When I spoke, the tone was low and measured, yet laced with undisguised disgust. Let me make one thing crystal clear, you sniveling worm. The free ride is over. No more embezzling from my family's hard-earned assets. No more living a champagne lifestyle by robbing from everyone around you with sociopathic glee. My gaze bored into his, ensuring he registered the full gravity and finality of my next words. I want a divorce, Clay. And I'll make sure you're left with nothing but a future of hand-me-down suits and prison-issued jumpsuits once the law catches up to your racketeering. In that instant, any facade of control Clay maintained came crashing down in spectacular fashion. Letting out a feral roar of rage, he lunged across the marble table and grabbed me by the shoulders, his grip punishing and brutal. You stupid, delusional whore. Everything I built, every bloody advantage and connection I've cultivated, was for us, for our future. He gave me a vicious shake, splattering spittle across my face. You'll never be anything more than a worthless trust fund brat without me. While part of me inwardly recoiled from the menacing violence radiating off him in waves, I remained utterly impassive, staring back at him with eyes made of granite. I'd prepared myself for the inevitability of his volcanic reaction to the truth. We're done here, I enunciated each word with surgical precision, refusing to give him an inch while twisting free of his grasp. The company and my father's legal team will deal with you appropriately from here on out. Snatching up the scattered papers and folders, I spun on my heel and strode for the sweet door, movements cold and economical. I'd feigned bravery many times in the face of Clay's posturing before, but no longer. You dare walk away from me, you ungrateful little cunt! His voice dripped with venom and wounded ego as he grabbed my arm in a vice-like grip. I'll bury you in litigation hell until you— His spittle-laced tirade was cut short as a thick muscular arm clamped around his windpipe from behind, squeezing just shy of full restriction. The imposing form of my dad loomed over Clay's suddenly panicked expression. That's enough out of you, dirtbag. Max's tone was lethal calm as he shoved Clay backwards, allowing him to flounder and gasp for air. Threaten my little girl again, and the next grip crushes your trachea. The explosive introduction of my father's imposing presence clearly gave Clay pause, and he staggered back a few steps, knuckles whitening around his abused neck. I allowed myself a tight, triumphant smirk as I took in the scene. Guess we're done with the false pretenses and sugarcoating the truth? 
my father's company is pressing charges against you for embezzling over five million from the firm's client account. Not to mention the multiple fraud and tax evasion charges awaiting once the authorities start digging into your slush funds and bogus vendors. You have no proof. Clay wheezed, beads of sweat speckled across his flushed brow. My lawyers will grind this joke of an accusation into the dirt. My expression hardened. Don't insult our intelligence. Between the paper trail linking your offshore accounts to dozens of improper money transfers and Dean's verified records from within the firm, you're beyond cooked. Dad took a menacing step forward. Any minute now, the local police and feds will be swarming this hotel on our call, plenty of proof to take you into custody while we build the criminal case against you. Clay's veneer of composure was crumbling rapidly. I could see the panic beginning to set in behind his eyes as the sheer futility of his situation dawned on him. Arya, think about what you're doing. You destroy me here, and I'll make sure you and your whole clueless family are destitute within a year. I let out a hollow peal of laughter, unfazed by his desperate threats. Keep flapping your gums, you degenerate snake. The only things you'll be making from now on are license plates and shivs for your new cellmates. Taking one last look at his sweaty, bulging-eyed countenance, I tossed the evidence folder at his feet in a contemptuous shower of documents. Thanks for the memories, Clayton. Your vile actions have freed me in ways you'll never understand. With that parting shot, I turned and strode from the room, my father falling into lockstep beside me. Sweet, heady relief washed over me with every passing step away from the soon-to-be prison-bound wretch. The worst was behind me. All that remained was basking in the restorative justice to come. The next few days passed in a whirlwind of police interviews, emergency board meetings at my father's company, and Clay's increasingly desperate attempts to bully his way out of the mounting charges. But Lena had the situation on ironclad legal lockdown. Armed with the comprehensive evidence we'd compiled, she deftly maneuvered past each of Clay's pitiful objections and stall tactics from his admittedly slick team of corporate lawyers. It all came to a head at an emergency board meeting, convened to decide Clay's immediate fate with the company. With the Department of Justice breathing down our necks, a rapid resolution was required before the feds applied for an asset freeze on all revenue tied to his alleged fraud. This is a personal vendetta orchestrated by my estranged wife and her lunatic family. Clay's voice echoed through the stifling conference room as the proceedings kicked off. He stabbed a manicured finger at me where I sat flanked by Lena and Max. Aria has manufactured these wild fabrications out of spite because I dared file for divorce first. A low rumble of incredulous muttering filled the room from the assembled board members and executives. Even his staunchest old boy enablers seemed skeptical of that narrative given the overwhelmingly detailed evidence. That's enough, Mr. Barrett. Roger Kingsley, CEO of our parent corporation, spoke in a clipped, no-nonsense tone as he wrapped his knuckles on the glossy tabletop. The forensic auditors and federal investigators have compiled more than enough documentation exposing your complex money laundering and theft from client accounts. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Clay's face go pallid, sweat beating on his taut brow. He opened his mouth to object, but Roger raised a solitary hand, silencing him. Furthermore, bank records and electronic data trails show you repeatedly pillaged marketing funds and cash reserves to finance your lavish personal expenditures and indiscretions. The older man's eyes blazed with undisguised contempt behind his wireframe glasses. Clay's Adam's apple bobbed rapidly as each new damning revelation piled atop the last, effectively burying him in an avalanche of incriminating facts. In light of this overwhelming evidence and the legal liability you represent, you're hereby stripped of all corporate authority and terminated for moral turpitude, effective immediately. Roger punctuated the statement by slamming his palm down on the table with a dull thud. This is an outrageous miscarriage of justice. Clay shot to his feet, face mottled with fury as he shouted down at the impassive Kingsley. When my legal team is through with your corrupt evidence and sham proceedings, none of you will have jobs. He whirled towards me, eyes mere slits of impotent rage. You'll regret letting your psychotic need for revenge open this Pandora's box, Arya. 
At that moment, the double doors at the rear of the conference room banged open with a clatter. Two grim-faced U.S. Marshals in crisp blue windbreakers strode in, flanking a diminutive woman in a no-nonsense Navy pantsuit. Clayton Barrett? The petite woman's voice carried a commanding presence that belied her stature as she addressed the now-bewildered Clay. My name is Sarah Wilkins, special agent with the FBI's Fraud Investigation Unit. She allowed the slightest hint of a thin smile to crease her severe features. You're under arrest for multiple counts of money laundering, embezzlement, tax evasion, and corporate fraud. Anything you say can and will be used against you. For a moment, the room hung in stunned silence as two burly deputy marshals advanced and cuffed the now sputtering clay, his jaw working furiously, but no words emerging. I turned a grateful eye towards Lena, who was sporting a rather self-satisfied grin as she watched her tormentor being hauled away, his expensive suit and disheveled hair the only remnants of the facade he'd so arrogantly maintained for years. Don't look so smug just yet, a nasal voice snarled as Clay caught my eye. You'll slip on a banana peel one of these days, Arya. And when you hit rock bottom with nothing and no one, maybe you'll appreciate the life I tried to build us. With that pathetic departing shot, the marshals wrestled Clay out of the room as Roger addressed the remaining shell-shocked assemblage. Thank you all for your patience and discretion during this catastrophic legal matter. I assure you, once the dust settles, we'll rebuild Kingsley Marketing to be an even stronger firm, one where ethics and public trust aren't merely corporate platitudes. As the meeting dispersed amid a low buzz of scandal-tinged chatter, Lena pulled me aside with an almost feral look of vindicated triumph shining in her eyes. Well, your lying, cheating snake of an ex just got his jaw-dropping comeuppance. Her smile was all shark-like bravado. That smug prick won't know what hit him once the weight of the federal indictments really sinks in. Though I should have been elated at Clay's unceremonious apprehension and professional demise, an inexplicable pang of melancholy tugged at my chest as I headed home. Maybe it was the raw fury and hate still radiating off him like body heat, or the glaring truth that any remnant of the decent driven man I fell for was permanently extinguished. Either way, the facade keeping us together as husband and wife had finally been obliterated, by my own hand, no less. I shuddered to think what Clayton's next moves might entail as the walls closed in. Whatever happened, I refused to surrender one more ounce of power or self-respect to that cancerous relationship. Clay's bombastic implosion and arrest were just the opening salvo in what would become a brutally drawn-out legal battle over the coming months. While federal prosecutors steadily built their sweeping racketeering case against him, my divorce attorneys initiated a blitzkrieg of personal litigation simultaneously. Armed with Lena's meticulous documentation of Clay's myriad financial crimes and personal indiscretions, they systematically dismantled the facade of his frivolous annulment filings, one after another. Within weeks, the galling reality of my inevitable full divorce and asset separation sunk in for the incarcerated Clay. He retaliated with the only tactics he knew, intimidation and unbridled cruelty. Venomous phone calls and letters arrived with escalating frequency, each more vile and threatening than the last, as he grew increasingly desperate in his quest for leverage. Take a look at this latest missive from your sociopath ex-hubby, Lena tossed a crumpled sheaf of papers onto my kitchen counter one afternoon, mouth twisted with disgust. I scanned the pages with a weary sigh, unsurprised to find more of Clay's all-too-familiar bile regurgitated in angry, looping scrawls. Details of sordid sexual escapades and expletive-laced insults filled the rantings, clear attempts to shame and demean me. How original. More pathetic Mako intimidation when he can't win on merits. I tossed the pages aside, unfazed by his bluster at this point. Keep tabs on these unhinged tangents in case we need a restraining order. The fact was, Clay Barrett's downfall had accelerated into a horrifying death spiral, stripping away every vestige of the arrogant blue-blood success he'd so carefully cultivated over the years. Within six months, every asset in his name, from the Hamptons Beach House to his beloved Mercedes AMG Coupe and Patek Philippe watch collection were liquidated and frozen to satisfy hundreds of thousands in mounting legal fees and potential restitution penalties. 
By the following fall, grim-faced federal agents arrived at the downtown luxury loft I'd purchased solely in my name and rousted Clay away to await trial. His previously buffed and groomed veneer was now replaced by a hunched, haunted look, dark circles engulfing his deadened eyes as marshals shackled and led him into a waiting transport van. Don't get too comfortable in your ivory tower, sweetheart, he called over his shoulder at me, desperation and hatred dripping from his words. Once I take these lying monsters down in court and prove my innocence, you'll be broke and homeless without me. I merely stared back at him, features blank and impassive, while inwardly marveling at how swiftly the mighty could crumble under the weight of their own sins and arrogance. My independence was secure. The last two years of meticulous legal groundwork by Lena and Max had ensured no messy asset retaliation or convoluted reversal of fortune. Clay would face his reckoning alone and destitute. Exactly as I'd vowed. As the battered transport van pulled away with my disgraced ex in tow, I turned and headed back inside, the faintest ghost of a relieved smile teasing my lips. I was free. As the dust settled in the months following Clay's dramatic imprisonment and our acrimonious divorce finalization, a profound sense of relief and renewal washed over me. Gone were the constant mind games, the gaslighting, the endless cycle of walking on eggshells around his volatile ego and emasculated rage. For the first time in over a decade, I was beholden to no one but myself, free from the shackles of codependence and manipulation that Clay had so insidiously bound me with. The very notion made me want to shout from the rooftops in pure, uninhibited elation. Instead, I channeled that euphoric energy into reclaiming my sense of self-worth and blazing new trails, both personally and professionally. This new chapter demanded a clean slate. You've paid your dues and conquered that sadistic monster, kiddo? Dad clasped my shoulder affectionately as we strolled through the bustling downtown streets one crisp autumn evening. Time to spread your wings and truly soar now that he can't hold you back. I gave him an appreciative smile and reciprocated the squeeze, marveling at how our previous fractures and strained codependency had mended throughout this tumultuous stretch. Thanks, Dad. I couldn't have regained my footing without you and Lena relentlessly in my corner. Don't thank me yet, he chuckled gruffly, waggling his eyebrows. You've got the hard-driving business acumen that's kept this family soaring for decades. The company's marketing team is yours for the taking, if you'll have it. While the prospect of leading my father's pride and joy venture filled me with no small trepidation, I couldn't deny the allure of that challenge, of proving I could helm a thriving enterprise by my own merits after everything with Clay. Embracing his poisoned legacy of deception and fear would be the ultimate cleansing rebirth. You've got yourself a deal, old man. Squaring my shoulders defiantly, I allowed a self-assured grin to spread across my face. I'll make you proud and elevate that team to unprecedented heights. By the following spring, I'd firmly rooted myself as managing director of Kingsley Marketing, orchestrating a full-scale creative and strategic overhaul that propelled the once-imperiled agency back into profitability. Every boardroom negotiation, Every hard-won new client acquisition and ensuing celebration was a cold slap of validation that I'd finally untangled myself from Clay's toxic web. And indeed, any faint murmurs of my disgraced ex's lingering animosity vanished once he was remanded to federal prison on a dizzying array of fraud and financial laundering convictions. After smugly short-circuiting the legal process for months with a cavalcade of motions and delay tactics, that first shocking footage of Clayton being led shackled from the courthouse in a tattered blue jumpsuit spread like wildfire through our professional circles. By all accounts, he faced a harsh, uncompromising stretch of 15 to 20 years behind bars, with financial penalties astronomical enough to ensure he'd never reclaim his previously high-flying lifestyle and ego upon release. Yet in stark contrast to his humiliating downfall, I found myself scaling new professional peaks and embracing profound personal growth daily, quickly establishing a reputation as a dynamic leader with integrity and vision. I fielded a dizzying array of career opportunities beyond the Kingsley umbrella. Turning down those lucrative offers was as gratifying as shedding those final invisible shackles of my traumatic marital past. Instead, 
I poured my energies into not just professional achievements, but selflessly mentoring other women striving to sidestep the cycles of domestic turmoil and subjugation that I'd narrowly escaped, inspiring them to harness their innate self-worth and chart their own ambitious courses, just as Lena and my father had shown me in my darkest hours. At last, I was the master of my own destiny, a thriving phoenix risen from the ashes of Clayton Barrett's twisted agenda with wings spanning ever further horizons. No longer would I be defined by his deceptions and cruelties, or wilt under his stifling control. I'd confronted those shadows head-on and emerged reborn into the self-possessed, confident woman I was always meant to become.